Today's Namaste Yoga is another beginner's class called How Far Should I Go? Hello and welcome to episode 251 of Namaste Yoga. I'm Dr. Melissa West and I'm here on Mount Tolme. And thank you to one of our viewers who suggested that we come here to film. It's a beautiful day at the end of October. When you view this, it will be All Hallows Eve, which is, um, you know, actually a very beautiful um, holiday. If you look at the <laughs> traditional version of it, it's kind of been really blown out of proportion in our culture, but um, yeah, go and look at the what it traditionally used to be about. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's 14 degrees Celsius here today, just a gorgeous sunny day, and we thought we'd come up to the top of Mount Tolme to film today. So thank you to Squeezed Yoga Clothing for my clothes. Today I'm wearing a long sleeve bamboo top with the Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu mantra on it and we will be singing that mantra at the end of our class as we do to close out our classes and thank you to Dusky Leaf for our props I am using a yoga mat from them today and also uh, blocks so you will need a yoga block today if you have one if not just make do with um, what you have and that would be great I have a testimonial today from Bianca and it came by email she says dear Melissa I'm not sure if this is a repliable email and I left that in because I want you to know that every single email that I send to you is repliable if you hit reply it comes to me <laughs> and I read all your emails so you can hit reply and I will read your emails and um, I, I do try to reply to all your emails. I eventually do get to all of them too. Um, but if so, I'd just like to thank you so much for providing free yoga practices. I've been practicing yoga through YouTube for about a year, but your videos are unlike any other class I've ever taken. I'm always excited for my practice, even on lazy or busy days. Your videos have also shown me a new side of myself, and I feel that with every new class, I bloom more into a flower I'm becoming. Please know that what you do is enormously appreciated, and I hope you will continue to touch lives like mine for a long time. Namaste, Bianca. So thank you, Bianca, for your testimonial. I appreciate that very much. And just to let you know, that was in response to uh, the email for the free morning yoga video. You, you can sign up to get a free morning and evening yoga video. It's not available anywhere else on the web. You have to, you go to my website and uh, if when you sign up for our newsletter at the top right hand corner, you can receive that. Okay, we're going to get started today. Just a few words about what this class is, if you're coming here for the first time because you're a beginner. We do an hour-long yoga class, and so you need to set aside an hour to practice now. Get out your mat, clear all your distractions, turn off your cell phone and your Facebook and your social media and your texting, and just clear the time for you to be able to practice. So this isn't like a five minute demo, something that you're gonna watch me do uh, amazing demonstrations of uh, feats of yoga. It's not like that at all. I'm actually going to teach you to do a class so that you can experience yoga. It's, it's a yoga class. So you're going to do a class in your own home for you. It's about your experience. So I am your teacher for the next hour and this is your class. So um, go ahead and rest back on your mat. You're going to um, 
lie down on your back. So I'll show you how to do that because this is a beginner class. I'm going to show you how to do everything. <coughs> So you're going to lie down on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor first. You're going to take a moment just to tuck your shoulder blades underneath you so that your chest is broader and your shoulders rest towards the ground a little bit, bit more. Then also you're going to press into your feet and tuck your tailbone under so that you're resting more on your sacrum so that your low back is long. And you can either stay here with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor or you can lengthen your legs out long if that doesn't bother your low back at all. So you can choose what works best for you here. And the reason that we start like this is so that your body has a chance to release tension, to settle into the ground, to let go of tightness into gravity and to transition from the busyness of your day-to-day -day life and all those external demands and to begin to turn inward and to let your focus bec become singularly focused unlike all the multifaceted focus of your day-to-day -day life so take a deep breath in through your nose here and let it fall out of your mouth and allow yourself to arrive here now. And you can take as many breaths like that as you need to feel like you've landed here. And you're going to stay here while I sit up and lead you through this guided relaxation to begin. So today's class is for beginners and also it can be a more advanced practice for those who have been practicing for a long time so that you can come to a class with beginner's mind as though this is the class, first time you've ever done yoga and that takes a really advanced focus actually, something called beginner's mind and we have a whole yoga class on that if you want to go check that out as well. And in this class, we're going to focus on how far you can go in a yoga pose to get the most out of your experience. How much is too much and how little is not enough, both on and off your yoga mat. So begin by tuning into your breath. And each time you breathe out, feel yourself sinking into the ground a little bit more. Just notice where you're feeling your breath in your body. No right or wrong or better best way to breathe. Just noticing how you're feeling your breath right now in this moment. Notice where you feel your breath in your body. No need to fix or change it or in, in any way. No right or wrong way to breathe. Just noticing where you feel your breath right now in this moment. And then tune into your physical body. And notice what stands out about your experience. What in your body is calling out your attention right now?
and what things seem to be kind of numb to your experience of your physical sensation right now. And then feel the ground underneath you and allow yourself to be fully supported by the ground. So feel the back of your body resting against the ground. And allow yourself to drop back even more into the ground. Let your bones be heavy. Let your body be heavy. Let your muscles soften so everything is sinking heavy into the ground and releasing to the pull of gravity. And then you can stay resting on your back. And if you don't have your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, you can bend your knees and place your feet flat on the floor. Okay, so with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor, you're going to take your left ankle and cross it over the top of your right thigh and then really open your left knee out to the side. And then you're going to draw your right knee in towards your chest. You're going to reach your left hand through that space that's created by your left leg. Hold on behind your right knee and draw your right leg in towards your chest until you find a sensation that holds your interest. The sensation will most likely be the most strong in the outside of your left thigh and into your left buttocks. Let your shoulders be relaxed, the back of your neck be long, your jaw be relaxed, the muscles of your face be soft. And be curious about that sensation that is holding your interest now. Now if that sensation starts to become too intense so that it's becomes difficult to be interested in it then you can always back off but also there may become a point where the sensation no longer holds your interest and so this pose might become boring in which case you want to adjust for that so that you could draw your right knee in a little bit more open your left knee out a little bit more so that you've adjusted for the fact that there's no more sensation holding your interest. So sensation is going to shift and change throughout your experience of the yoga posture. And when you're paying attention to the sensation in your body, you can make adjustments for that by either backing off if sensation is too much or coming a little bit more deeply into the pose so that something is holding your interest. And then you can release your right leg down, uncross your left leg, and take a moment to feel the difference between the left and right side of your body. And then you can cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh, open your right knee out to the side, and slowly draw your left knee into your chest. Reach your right hand through that space that you're making with the right leg. Hold on in the back of the left leg. And here you're going to 
come to a spot where you start to receive feedback about what's happening in your body. So you're going to come to a spot where you start to receive some kind of feedback about what's happening in your body. And you're going to receive more feedback if your left leg is fully bent. So oftentimes I'll see a left leg way up here, but you will receive more feedback if your left leg is fully bent. And you can start to make those micro adjustments so that that feedback is more interesting in your body. You can be, have something that holds your interest. Notice how your body is being breathed as you are in this posture as well. And then you can release the posture down on this side of your body. And you're going to have both your feet flat on the floor. I'm actually going to take my socks off now so I have better grip through my feet. And you're going to need a block here. And I'm going to give you a couple of options for a block. If you don't have a block, you know what, you'd be fine without it in this pose too. But it's really nice for alignment through your legs so that you have good alignment through your hips, knees, and ankles. And that's really great for um, preventing any issues in your knees. Um, so that just for really good integrity in your knees. So what you're gonna do is place that block between your knees and then you're going to press into your knees and you're going to press, did I say press into your knees? I meant press into your feet. You're gonna press into your feet and you're going to lift your pelvis and you're gonna to come to a place where any more would be too much but any less would be why bother. So you're gonna find that place that's just right for you where so for me down here would be why bother but if I come up higher in my own body it would be too much for me today because and I know this is boring for all of you who are following me for a long time but I have a shoulder injury so it's gonna hurt my shoulder so on any other given day, it might be okay for me to come higher, but for today, this is enough for me. So you can play with that in this pose, backing off where you feel like, okay, there's that place of why bother, and then pouring on the gas and finding that place of, okay, wow, that's too much. You're just going to find that place where Sensation is happening, something's happening, curiosity can be sustained, and that means that I can be curious about what's happening in my body with my breath, and I can sustain that curiosity. So if I was pushing way too much, if I had way too much gas in this pose, then I really couldn't sustain the curiosity because I'm just gonna burn out. I'm gonna run out of gas for the pose. And I'm going to find that place in the pose between too much and too little where I can sustain the posture and be curious about what's happening in my body and with my breathing.
and then slowly lower down through your spine lower your pelvis back down onto the ground take that block out from between your knees and then draw your knees into your chest now if you have any knee issues you're going to want to hold on behind your knees on your hamstrings on the backs of your thighs let your shoulders be heavy and feel that stretch through your low back From here, you're going to make your way up onto all fours. So you can either roll to your side and come up to all fours, or you can tuck your chin and roll yourself up. <laughs> okay, so from here, we're gonna warm up our spine a little bit more. You're gonna take your hands underneath your shoulders and your knees underneath your hips. Spread your fingers really wide. If this bothers your wrists at all, you can always come up onto fists, or you can even come down onto your forearms, which I can only do on one forearm today. So do what works best for you. And then you're gonna exhale, round up through your back, and inhale and arch through your back. Exhale, round through your back, and inhale, arch through your back. And then walk your hands back to your knees and come up so that you're standing on your knees and turn so that your mat is lengthwise. And you're going to stand on your left knee, extend your right leg out long. And inhale, take both um, arms overhead. So this is my shoulder injury, so only one arm goes overhead. But you're gonna take both arms overhead. And then you're gonna side bend over your right leg and then wherever your right arm lands you're going to lower it unless it lands on the knee joint and then you're going to take it above or below the knee joint and you're side bending over your over your right leg and again you're going to find that place where it's between too much and too little and i've got all these different ways of explaining that to you today so i just want to make sure I cover them off. So you want to, I want you to come in and out again and come in and move until your body says, oh yeah, right here. That's where I want to stop today. And know that that right here might change too. And then come on back up and you're going to bring your right leg in now and you're going to extend your left leg out this time. And same thing, you're going to inhale, take both arms overhead and then you're going to exhale and you're going to side bend over to the other side until you find a position that is challenging yet doable. Okay, so challenging yet doable. And your right arm will be up and overhead if that works in your body.
Okay, and then come back to the center and find a comfortable position to sit in. So you're going to, we're going to sit with a mudra so that we combine yoga and meditation. That yoga is part of a sitting practice. And in this part, you will receive more of the teachings and get an opportunity to set your intention. We're going to do this part with a mudra, which is yoga for your hands. We're going to do the shan, shank vrata mudra. And the way that that works is you're going to take your hands in front of your heart your palms are going to face you're going to join the tips of all of your fingers and then you're going to bend your right finger at the second joint so it looks like that almost looks like you're making half a heart with your like if you're going to make that heart shape with your first finger and you're going to bring that at the level of your heart and you're going to breathe naturally and become still and quiet so the reason why I chose this is that it quiets your mind and it turns your attention inward. It strengthens your intuition and it serves as a gateway to hear the wordless teachings of your own original nature. And so when we're, really, when we're thinking about um, the teachings for today's class, the intention behind today's class, which is about finding that place between too much and too little of staying engaged in our yoga practice, being able to really tune into your own intuition and to be able to turn into your own inner teacher, this mudra really works well because it allows you to become quiet, turn inward and sense what's happening in your own body. And, and if you can do that, you'll have a very long and fulfilling practice of, of yoga in your lifetime. So you will stay here, you'll close your eyes and you'll sit with that mudra as I share with you the teachings for today. So today's class is about exploring the dance between too much and not enough in your yoga practice. This really comes down to the potential entanglement of boredom, entertainment, and distraction through yoga posture, or asana, your yoga asana practice. Well-known contemporary American poet Mary Oliver says, if the poem is thin, it's not likely because the poet doesn't know enough words. The poet does not know enough words. It's because he or she has not stood long enough among the flowers, has not seen them in any fresh, exciting, and valid way. And I would contend that the same is true of yoga. If one is bored in their yoga experience, it is not because one does not know or has not tried enough yoga poses or exciting enough yoga poses, but because the yogi has not been in contact with their body in any real way and has not had an intimate experience with their own participation in yoga. So finding that just right place between too much and too little experience in a yoga posture can make a huge difference between your yoga class seeming too easy, too hard, or too boring and makes you your own best teacher. It's up to you to find the position in your body where you are fully engaged. That is experiencing sensation in your body that something is happening whether you're doing the pose for the first time or the millionth time. How much is enough is a worthwhile question in every single yoga posture as a way of opening the doors of awareness to sensation in your body where something is happening in the belly of your muscles and your joints are free of pain and you're able to explore that sensation with curiosity, ease, and steadiness. If the physical sensation in your body is so strong that all you are able to focus on is that sensation, sensation, then physical sensation has become a distraction. You are probably pushing yourself too hard. There may even be important life connections to consider here. Do you tend to push yourself too hard in your day-to-day -day life as well? Are you a thrill seeker? Do you need things to always be new and exciting? 
Do you go, go, go and compete to exhaustion? Do you end up burnt out and sick? What would happen in your yoga posture if you didn't push so hard? What would happen if you were simply present to physical sensation, breath, thoughts, emotions, memory, and energy in your yoga posture? What would happen if you were truly present to what was happening in your life instead of being on overdrive, bored, or checked out? If you paced yourself more instead of doing too much, would you be able to listen to your own body? Yoga isn't a thrill-seeking extreme sport. It's about showing up every day to the mundane, the joyful, the challenging, the boring, the new and the old in a way that is curious and receptive. When we ask ourselves how much is too little and how little is not enough, physically our yoga postures can help us to build strength, flexibility, balance and endurance in our lives. All of these components can be taken to an excess in our yoga asana or posture practice. Functionally, we really only need so much strength, flexibility, balance, and endurance to get through our days. So when we go to extremes seeking strength, flexibility, balance, and endurance through our yoga practice, we have to ask ourselves, am I using my yoga practice to support my life? Or am I using it as distraction from my life? Or as a form of entertainment? In our culture of spiritual materialism, yoga is displayed in the marketplace as something to be attained in 11 second videos and visually stunning still shots. Yet ultimately yoga is a, an experiential practice, an experience of turning inward to what is actually happening in the moment. This can't ever be captured in a photograph. In each yoga posture, you are going to pay enough attention so that you can come deeply enough into your pose so that you are experiencing something, not achieving something. It is about an inward experience and not an outward shape. One more thing. This place of inward experience is always shifting and changing. Unlike a still photograph which captures a millisecond of perceived perfection, Opening the doors of awareness to be interested in your moment to moment experience means making steady adjustments to what you discover about your experience. It might mean backing off here or going deeper there, both in your yoga postures, on your mat, and in your life. Go ahead and form an intention of what it is you'd like to receive from today's yoga class. What is it that you're trying to create, sustain, release, or rebirth in your life right now? And how could this yoga practice best help you do that? So once you've set your intention, then you can go ahead and release your mudra from your hands. And you can open your eyes and we are going to make our way up to standing. From standing, take your feet underneath your hips, bones, with the inner edges of your feet parallel. Lift and spread your toes, lengthen your legs long out of your pelvis and then your spine will rebound up. Draw your ears back over your shoulders, and then you're gonna slowly lower your right ear towards your right shoulder. So here you wanna find that sensation between effort and ease. And in the background here, you can see the San Juan Islands and some of you may even be watching from there right now so if you are hello <laughs> my american friends and maybe even send me an email and let me know that you were watching <laughs> from the same one islands when we filmed this and then bring your head back to the center 
and then you're going to slowly lower your right ear to your right shoulder and you're exploring for that sensation between soft and hard in your experience. And then bring your head back to the center. And here you're going to need a block again. So take the block and place it between your knees. And you're going to inhale, take your arms overhead. You're gonna take both your arms overhead. And then you're gonna exhale and sit back. And you're going to find a position that will support you in staying in your experience right now. So this can be a pose that can be really challenging. So find a position that will support you in staying in your experience over time. So too much and you won't be able to stay too little and it's going to be like, why bother again? So find a position that will support you in staying in your experience. You're finding that position between gas and brake. making those little adjustments over time to find that position that supports you best. And then slowly come up and out of your chair pose, Utkatasana. And then you're going to turn sideways on your mat, take your feet out wide, and your feet are turned to 10 and two o'clock and you're going to sink straight down with your knees pointing back and find you're going to notice what holds your interest and focus and attention you're going to find a place that holds your interest focus and attention and you're going to bring both arms up like this And again, making those micro adjustments that can sustain this. Yeah, sorry, we took about a half hour break for a leaf blower and it's still going. <laughs> we thought it was done. Lawn mowers were my nemesis in Ajax, Ontario, and leaf blowers are my nemesis here in Victoria, <laughs> BC. <laughs> yeah, they've been particularly bad in the last few weeks. Hopefully once all the leaves are down, it will be a, a temporal thing. These, this too shall pass. Okay, you can come up and out of this pose and shake your legs out. And then we're gonna come into a pose where your legs get a little bit of a break now, which I'm sure you're pretty happy to hear about that. So you're gonna come down onto your back and lie with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. And you need your block for this. So you're gonna press into your feet and place the block underneath your pelvis so that you feel it on your sacrum. That's the large triangular bony shaped structure in the middle of your pelvis. And then once you've got it in the center of your pelvis, you're going to fold one knee in and fold the other knee in. 
and then just take your legs straight in the air. And this is supported shoulder stand, and this block will just help you to effortlessly have your legs in the air. So this is a nice, simple, supported inversion where your legs are in the air and your head is below your heart. And then you can bend your knees, place your feet flat on the floor, and press into your feet so you can lift up off your block and take your block off to the side. And then you'll just roll over onto your stomach. And on your stomach, Take your arms down by the side of your body and feel the tops of your legs heavy on the ground, the tops of your feet heavy on the ground. Reach your sit bones down to behind your knees so that you're pressing the front of your pelvis into the ground basically so that your low back is long. Roll your shoulders back and up. Breathe in. Breathe out, draw your navel back to your spine. And then you're going to breathe in. And lift your chest up off the ground. And then the next inhale, lift both your legs up off the ground as well. They just can't give it up with that leaf blower. <laughs> keep, <laughs> keep holding and breathing. And you're going to adjust your body until you arrive at an experience that captures your attention. In this pose, you might notice it's not so much arriving in an experience, but almost rolling through an experience like waves in the ocean. Because you're riding your breath. And then you can slowly lower down and you're going to push yourself up onto all fours. Draw your knees up underneath you and bring your hands down by your feet. Rest your forehead on the ground to stretch out your low back here. And if this bothers your knees, you can lie on your back and hug your knees into your chest instead. Breathe right into your lower back. And 
And then roll up through your spine. You're going to take your legs out long in front of you. And here, if you have your meditation cushion or a folded blanket that you can sit on the edge of, because generally most of us have tight hamstrings and it pulls our pelvis under so that it can be challenging to sit upright, especially if you're sitting on a mountain that's going downwards on a slope. I can definitely turn around because then that also helps me with my s slope. <laughs> it makes me go downhill now. <laughs> much easier to sit. So s see how that actually helps me sit upright a little bit more. Um, so you can do that by sitting right up on a little folded blanket and it just helps you roll your pelvis over your leg bones a little more easily and sit upright a little bit more. And what you're going to do is bend your right leg, open your right knee up to the side. Now if your right hip is really tight and your leg is hanging up here in the air, then I would rather you support your hip joint by placing a block underneath it so that it's not hanging in midair so that your joints aren't taking, trying to create integrity where there's no integrity. You're going to inhale, lengthen up tall through your spine and exhale, you're going to rotate so you're twisting. And then inhale and come back to the center. And then you're going to exhale and you're going to hinge forward over your hips. And you're going to find a place where you breathe fully in and out without strain, but also where your breath is focused. So your breath can be a really in good indication of what's too much and what's not enough as well. And then slowly roll your pelvis back up over your leg bone and bring your right leg in. Extend your right leg out. This time you're going to fold your left leg in and open your left knee out to the side. So again, if your left leg doesn't rest all the way on the ground, you're going to fill that space with either a blanket, a cushion, or your block so that your SI joint is supported. If you want to know more about that, we've got a great video on our, in our shop and in our membership site about, all about your SI joint so you don't injure it. Lengthen up tall through your spine. You're going to rotate. Take your right hand to the outside of your left knee. And then inhale back center and exhale. You're going to roll your pelvis over your leg bone and you know, just ask yourself to what extent are you experiencing sensation in your physical body right now? And can you make an adjustment so that you can experience sensation in your physical body?
and then hinge back up through your hips. And you're going to take both legs long. And you're going to slowly roll down onto your back for Shavasana. So tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Bend your knees, press into your feet so that you tuck your tailbone under. You can either leave your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor if your low back is tender or you can lengthen out long through your legs if that feels comfortable in your body. So I have a quote for you today in Shavasana. I know, um, thank you so much for all your kind words about my poem last week and I really tried to come up with a poem out of today's theme and it just wasn't happening. <laughs> so, and, but I have a really great quote that I think works so well for today's class. So it's by Judith Hanson Lassiter. And she has done so much for yoga. She has a beginner's book on yoga, I believe. Uh, but she's mostly well known for her teachings on restorative yoga. Her book, Rest and Renew. And her quote that we're using today, that we're going to quote her for, is, Yoga is not about touching your toes. It's about what you learn on the way down. And so if, to me, it feels like all of our class today was about that space um, between what happens on the way down to your toes, about paying attention to what happens on the way down to your toes. And gradually allow your breath to deepen. Wiggle your fingers and toes. And circle your ankles and wrists. And bend your knees. You might even want to rub your hands and feet together. wake up all the nerve endings and then bend your knees roll to your right side pause here and slowly make your way up to seated so we will finish our class with our mantra Lokha samasta sukhino bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions in my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom 
of all. And what we're doing with this mantra and moving mudra practice is gathering in all the benefits of our practice, gathering them all up and then offering them out into the world. So start with your left palm up and your right palm down. The way that it works is you start uh, by drawing it in. You hook all your, your last three fingers, your index fingers, and your thumbs come parallel to each other and then you bring it into your forehead. So that's the gathering. And then you do the Gyan Mudra, thumb and index finger together and hands cross. And then you bring the heels of your hands together to your forehead with the Gyan Mudra pinkies together. So we are gonna be doing this from now on as a way to end our practice. So if you don't get it this week, we'll, we'll get it together. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu so thank you for joining me for episode 251 of Namaste Yoga. If you liked sh today's show, then like the show and subscribe to our channel. Share it with a friend or email it to a coworker and leave your comments below. Today's question is, how do you know when too much is too much? in your yoga practice and in your life. So you can leave those comments below. You can subscribe to our channel here. And um, if you like this class and you want to go deeper, we have lots of value added content on our membership site to support you in taking your practice further. And you can subscribe right below on this link right here. I have a couple of classes to recommend for you that are in line with today's theme. One is a class called Off the Wall Yoga, and that's all class, a whole class is against the wall. And it allows you to use the wall as support, alignment, and resistance. So it's a really cool way to have something with you to show you when um, it's too much or not enough. And uh, this was a really popular class when we first put it on the membership site. It's a really great, uh, the, t the wall becomes like having another a teacher in the room um, that's constantly there giving you the adjustments. And so it can be a really cool way to check in with too much and too little all the way through. Another uh, series on the membership site, I get so many questions about weight loss. And so this seems like off the mat, is a really big issue for so many of you um, and I think if you're looking at that off the mat issue of too much and too little right how do I know how to feed my body am I feeding my body too much am I feeding my body too little so in response to this on the membership side I created this whole series called mindful eating there's a lecture there's a meditation and there's a yoga class and this really helps you to tune into um, your inner wisdom, your inner knowing, and um, just a lot better feedback system than your mouth, which is always going to want too much. <laughs> There's other ways of knowing when to stop with food. Um, so it's yoga class, lecture, meditation, the mindful eating workshop, uh, and it'll help you explore this questions of too much or too little around food for all of you who have asked me about weight loss. So we'd love for you to join our membership where we have value added content, a community of like-minded people who come together from all around the world and where you can receive support from me in deepening your yoga practice. So that's our link right here. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia, gorgeous day here. May you experience the strength of our mountains. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest and may your joy be as deep as the Pacific Ocean. Om Shanti Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.